This is Bishop George Murray. On behalf of your Catholic friends and neighbors in the Diocese of Youngstown, I invite you to join us for this celebration of the Holy Mass. Good morning. Welcome to the celebration of the Mass here at St. Paul's in Canfield, Ohio. Our celebrant for this Mass will be Father Matthew. Our opening hymn can be found in your missalette, number 257, Arise, O Church, Arise. Please stand. Arise, O Church, rejoice. Let every heart afire with passion. Rightful voice and join with heaven's choir to praise the Lord of grace who left creation's throne to walk in human time and space, embrace us as his own. Arise, O church, to share the triumph of. us in its snare of shame and suffering. Our resurrected Lord has shattered evil's chain. Eternal friendship has restored to strengthen and sustain. Good morning. We thank all of you who are joining us here at our chapel at St. Paul Monastery and those who are joining us over our ecumenical channel here in Northeast Ohio. Today we celebrate the third Sunday of Ordinary Time and we come in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, now and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son, we may abound in good works through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah saying, set out for the great city of Nineveh and announce to it the message 
that I will tell you. So Jonah made ready and went to Nineveh according to the Lord's bidding. Now Nineveh was an enormously large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began his journey through the city and had gone but a single day's walk, announcing, 40 days more and Nineveh shall be destroyed. When the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast, and all of them, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw by their actions how they turned from their evil way, He repented of the evil that he had threatened to do to them. He did not carry it out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I tell you, brothers and sisters, the time is running out. From now on, let those having wives act as not having them, those weeping as not weeping. 
those rejoicing as not rejoicing, those buying as not owning, those using the world as not using it fully. For the world in its present form is passing away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. With you. With your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. After John the Baptist had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. As he passed by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting their nets into the sea. They were fishermen. He said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. They abandoned their nets and followed him. He walked along a little farther and saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They too were in a boat, mending their nets. Then he called them. So they left their father Zebedee in the boat, along with the hired men, and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Today's readings ask us to reflect upon the call of God given to each one of us individually and personally, and how we have responded to share then the kingdom of God, to share the gospel message. And I think there are three parts to this calling. The first is the calling itself. So we go to today's gospel, and Jesus does not go to the scribes. He does not go to the Pharisees. He does not go to the Sadducees. He doesn't go to those who know all the laws of the Mosaic law and every tenant of the Torah, but he goes to fishermen. He sees four men that he calls that he wants to be his followers. Now, even on the shore, I'm sure there were other fishermen. There were probably people who were helping to mend the nets, people helping to clean the fish. Maybe their families were there. So he chose these four men in particular, and he says, I'm going to make you fishers of men. And the reason he said that is because maybe that they use their individual talents that he wanted them to use that for the kingdom of God. Maybe they knew exactly the time of day it was the best time to fish. Was it at night? Was it in early morning, late evening, in the afternoon? Maybe they knew how to cast that net greatly to get the most fish. Maybe they could see the signs on the water of when the water is moving, there's a school of fish, and that's where we want to go and fish. So he says, I want to use those talents to further the kingdom of God. They'll know when is the right time to call people. They'll know how to cast that net largely to gather as many people to be followers of Jesus Christ. They'll see the movement of the Spirit in people's lives and be able to move there and get them to come to know the Lord. So the Lord calls each one of us to use our gifts and abilities and our talents on furthering the kingdom of God. 
Now, we may not be the great teachers or we may not be the great theologians. We may not be the great knowledge of what's going on in the church and the teachings that we do, but we are ones who use our abilities to further the kingdom of God. Now, I think of my time when I was in the seminary, and I consider myself a pastoral priest. I don't consider myself a theologian. I consider Father Jeff a theologian because he's very brilliant, very smart, and knows everything about everything. And so he can handle any situation. I'm less smart in that area. Now, it doesn't mean that I'm stupid. It doesn't mean I don't know what I'm talking about. It just means that I don't know off the top of my head where all the tenets of the canon law and the, uh, uh, the catechism, but I can go and find the information. And I remember when I was in the seminary, and there was one class where most of us got C's in the class. And a couple of my classmates were upset they didn't get an A or a B. So the professor says, a C is a gentleman's grade. I give you information, you give it back to me. So you understood what I am telling you. And he says, and you're a gentleman, and that's okay because you have the knowledge you need to be a priest. Now, if you do more in-depth study, more deeper understanding, and you present that to me, he says, then I'll give you your A and I'll give you your B. So all I can say is I was quite the gentleman when I was in the seminary. <laughs> and I assume that some of my classmates who had the A's and the B's are now the theologians. But the key is the Lord is choosing us. We don't all have to have the brains and the smarts to know everything about the gospel and everything about the kingdom of God and everything about the church. We are to answer the call of God because he's choosing each one of us at our baptism, gives us the Holy Spirit and says, now be a part of the kingdom of God. So the first part is we answer that call. The second is we leave behind our nets. James and John, Peter and Andrew left their nets behind, left their families behind, and went to follow the Lord. So we need to leave behind the things that keep us from acknowledging the fullness of the presence of God. We go to our first reading, Jonah goes to Nineveh. It says it took three days to walk through the whole uh, city. After one day, the whole city converts. He didn't have to wait three days. But what that conversion meant, it was the same people, the same city, the same works that they were doing every day, but it was a different world because they had repented, gave up their evil ways and began to follow the Lord. St. Paul in his letter today says it's a different world, it's changing if you follow Jesus Christ. He says if you were married, act like you're not married. If you were weeping, act like you're not weeping. If you're rejoicing, act like you're not rejoicing. If you're buying, act like you're not owning. He says the world is changing because of our presence of Jesus Christ. So we leave behind our sins, leave behind the things that block us from acknowledging the presence of God in our life. We put on Jesus Christ. We put on what he has asked us to do. And then we do the third part, which is the following. We go out and we share the gospel message. And because we have answered that call, because we have left behind the things that block us from acknowledging the fullness of the presence of God, we now are going forth to use whatever talents and abilities, that's a phrase I often use, to say how we're going to live our lives. So that means we're going to build bridges of peace. We're going to respect the sanctity of life, the dignity of marriage. We're going to reflect upon the honor of sexuality. We're going to honor those who need some help and assistance in our lives. So as we share the gospel message, as we go out and say repent, as we go out and say the kingdom of God is here and you need it in your lives, that doesn't mean we're going to change the world. It doesn't mean we're going to change the United States. It doesn't mean we're going to change Ohio. It doesn't mean we're going to change Canfield. It doesn't mean we're going to change the township of Ellsworth. But we can change our lives. We can change the people that we meet, our family and our friends, by the way we witness, by the way we speak, by the way we live our lives. It'll change the people that we encounter in the drugstore, the encounter at the bank, encounter in the post office, shopping places, restaurants, anywhere we meet people. It'd be in our workplaces. 
So some of us who may be teachers, those of us who may be professors, can use those professions to teach about the kingdom of God. It doesn't necessarily mean we're standing on the soapbox and proclaiming it, but it means we're living out a good Catholic Christian life by what we say and do and how we witness to our students and those who we are teaching to. And so all the professions that we have, we are asked to share the gospel message. Ask in the way we share and love one another. Because if we do that, if we answer that call, get rid of the things that block us and follow Jesus Christ and give the message, then we will bring the kingdom of God. We will then change our families. We will change our neighborhoods. We will change our cities. We will change our state. We will change our governments and our United States. And we will change the world because we are witnessing and sharing the gospel message with everyone. Let us stand together now and share our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in God's mercy and kindness, let us now pray for all those in need. For the church that we may faithfully announce the good news through both word and deed and draw others to Christ by our lives and compassionate care for those in need, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For greater authenticity in our lives, that in our ordinary activities and duties, we may manifest the values and virtues of Christian discipleship, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christian unity, that God will heal the wounds and misunderstandings of the past and lead all the baptized to a new and more united witness to the gospel and dedication to overcoming evil and injustice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, that they may be welcomed by Christ to the eternal banquet of God's reign. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill, particularly for those with influenza, that God will ease their pain and speedily restore them to health. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And as we pray the intentions of this Mass, let us remember Teresa Sperkansky, for whom this liturgy is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us pray for the right of life from the moment of conception to natural death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful God, you were willing to relent when people turned to you in faith. We turn to you now with our needs and humbly ask you to hear us and grant them according to your will through Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. The Song of Preparation can be found in your Missalette number 276, The Summons. Will you come and follow me 
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our preface today will be Eucharistic uh, for Various Needs, number two. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Up Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, creator of the world and source of all life. For you never forsake the works of your wisdom, but by your providence are even now at work in our midst. With mighty hand and outstretched arm, you led your people Israel through the desert. Now as your church makes her pilgrim journey in the world, you always accompany her by the power of the Holy Spirit and lead her along the paths of time to the eternal joy of your kingdom through Christ our Lord. And so with the angels and saints, we too sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You are indeed holy, and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race, and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love. And when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread, when we drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, and whose body and blood we have communion. And so, having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, religious, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and of all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. Paul, St. Agnes, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Alleluia. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Christ, Christ with you. Most holy body and blood from all my sins. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. And blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The communion hymn can be found in your missalette, number 265, Song of the Body of Christ. We come to share our story, we come to break the bread, we come to know our rising from the dead. Softly and tenderly Jesus is calling 
calling for you and for me. See on the portals, he's waiting and watching, watching for you and for me. Come home, come home, you who are weary, come home, earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, O oh sinner, come home. Why should we tarry when Jesus is pleading, pleading for you and for me? Why should we linger and heed not his mercies, mercies for you and for me? Tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, O oh sinner, come home. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We thank all of you for joining us here at our Mass at St. Paul Monastery and those joining us over Ecumenical Channel here in Northeast Ohio. Thank you again. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn can be found in your missal at number 249, Lord, When You Came. Lord, when you came to the seashore, you weren't seeking the wise or the well.
whom they found with great joy, the light from light, who is Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please join me and go tell it on the mountain, number 205. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept their watching, or silent flocks by night, behold, throughout the heavens there shone a This is Bishop George Murray. On so we're, we need your help, we need your assistance, so please pick one up at the, as you go out this morning. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. can be an idol built of gleaming gold bringing dreams of paradise a future's bought and sold some will choose to gather it all that they can hoard but as for me and my house we will serve the lord pleasure is a siren Promising the flesh 